All right, so in the second video, we're going to look at calorimetry, okay? So calorimetry is how we actually measure the heats of a reaction. So let me grab my pen, and we'll jump into this. <clears throat> All right, so there's a couple different ways we can do calorimetry. Um, the first one, the one that's in this picture, is called a bomb calorimeter. And it's called a bomb calorimeter because we combust things in this small enclosed space. So the way a calorimeter works is it is insulated, all right? It has um, this this outer wall right here, all right, in, and the, the top are both insulated. A lot of times we'll use coffee cups. We'll use styrofoam because styrofoam is a good insulator. There's water, all right, inside the calorimeter. And we can use water uh, in a calorimeter because we know the specific heat of water, number one. And number two, it's really easy to uh, measure changes in the water with this thermometer that we have stuck down in there. Now, if we're doing a true bomb calorimetry, there will be two ignition wires that go down into this sample dish. And so what you do is <clears throat> you load your sample. You put this top on. You fill this thing up with water. You put the second top on, and then you hit the ignition wires. The ignition wires ignite whatever is in the sample disk. It heats up, which we can see right here. It explodes, it burns, whatever it is. All right, And the heat from that reaction is absorbed by the water, and you can see that there is a change in the temperature. And that's how we, we do bomb calorimetry. So once that substance is ignited, all right, we use this formula, Q equals MC delta T. All right, we've just written it a little different here, um, CM delta T. And this tells us um, how much energy is in the water, okay? And we know that the bomb, right, the uh, the thing right here, this, this box, right, also has a heat capacity. So... Um, we know it, right? When we use that bomb, we use something that might be aluminum or something that we know the heat capacity of. And we can say that the total heat evolved, Q total, is equal to the heat of the water, which we found here, and the heat of the bomb, which we find there. That's that easy. Now, if I want to look at this in terms of an actual equation or an actual reaction, I have here octane, okay, which is what's in gasoline, right? Um, and octane is going to react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now, we could go out and just burn a whole, you know, one gram of octane. Or right, when we do our calorimetry, we can note what the temperature change is in the water. So the water goes from 25 to 33.2 uh, degrees Celsius. We know the calorimeter has 1,200 grams of water in it. We know that the heat capacity of our bomb is 837 joules. So we're just going to do the exact same thing we did this a moment ago. We calculate the Q of the water, all right, of H2O. We do the specific heat of water times the mass of water in the bomb times the change in temperature. And that tells us we have 41,170 joules. And then we have the bomb's heat capacity, so 837 joules per Kelvin times 8.2, which is our change in temperature. That gives us another 6,800 joules. We add the two together, and we get 48,030. Now, this is heat leaving the reaction. Heat leaving the reaction. That's what that number is. It's positive. All right, and that means that since it's leaving the system, right, since it's leaving the reaction that we're studying, that the actual heat of combustion for octane is negative, right, because energy is going to leave. So it's an exothermic reaction, so that is a negative number. And we just divide it by 1,000 to get to kilojoules, so we have negative 48 kilojoules. All right, let's look at one more example. This will be the last one. Um, if you burn 0.315 moles of hexane in a bomb calorimeter, with 5.65 liters of water, find the molar heat of combustion of hexane. All right, the water temperature is going to rise to 55 or by 55.4 degrees Celsius. So we start with delta H equals mc delta T. All right, remember that delta H and Q can be used pretty much interchangeably here, <clears throat> and delta H is enthalpy, and we'll talk more about enthalpy in the coming uh, couple of lessons. 
And so we plug it in and we get delta H is 1310 kilojoules. Very important, though, that we don't stop right here because the question asks us for molar heat and we have not burned a whole mole. So we have 1310, all right? And what is a molar heat, right? What's the difference in a molar heat and a heat of combustion? Well, molar heat just means per one mole, all right? Heat of combustion is just per unit mass or per unit volume. So a heat of combustion could be for anything, per gram, per milliliter, or whatever. But if the question specifically asks for molar heats, then we have to convert. And this can be molar heat of fusion. You can have molar heat of vaporization. You can have... Um, you know, any of those regular heats, we can put molar in front of them. So we got 0.315 moles. We need to convert that over to one mole. So we're going to multiply by one mole over 0.315 moles. We're going to convert and we get uh, 3.17 there. And so when we multiply it out, we get 4150 kilojoules per mole. All right. So that's the end of this set of slides. Now, I do want to point out there's um, in the past, I've done some office hours about these things, and there are some slides at the end of this. This is a pretty in-depth look at one of those um, heating curves. OK, so we have temperature up here, we have heat energy down here. Um, if you're doing phase changes, look at the green. All right. If you're doing uh, just like NC delta T. All right, that's going to be from your uh, blue right here. So like the blue line right there, the blue line right here. If you have any questions about this, because I know there's a lot of stuff on here, um, please let me know. All right, and there's just a couple other little pieces of math uh, that I worked last year for some kids there, if you want to look at it, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be glad to help you guys out, all right? Um, I will see you guys in the next video.